This is a Protea. It's powered by a four-cylinder, 1172cc engine, producing a fairly modest 37 brake horsepower. But thanks to its fiberglass body, it weighs just 630 kilograms. And so a brisk 85 miles an hour is possible. Protea? Protea, yes. Yeah, where does that name come from? That's our national flower. Ah. So wait, this is what, 1956? 57. 57. Pro oh, I've got to get I'm not going to get up. Oh, I've got a double D clutch, wait, oh, I'll stop. Oh, got to get my double D clutching skills back. This is the very first ever South African made car. Yeah, other than two gentlemen, early 1900s, who made an attempt, Street and Smith, they tried to build a car, but never went into production. The Protea might lack the evocative name of a Ferrari or Porsche, but owning one will make you a member of a far more exclusive club. So how many did they build of these? 14 genuine ones were built, and the company needed to keep going, so they sold an extra six bodies, which were fitted on different oh, running oh, gear. Hold on, lean, 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 lean. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. We we go. Made right. it. Got it out. Right. And were they built as racing cars or street cars? Most of them went racing. This exact one we're riding in actually raced in the 1959 nine hour by Mr. Robbins, who was the first owner of it. And naturally, I want to drive some of their work. So I persuaded Catalin to let me take two of his favorites to a nearby kart track. I think I'll start with some glamour. This 1966 Mercedes-Benz 230 SL was discovered as a rusty, rotting wreck in the United States of America, bought for about $6,000, brought to Romania, and given a 40,000 euro complete rebuild, something that would have cost significantly more in England. It's now as good as new, gleaming and glorious, and worth around 70,000 euro. That's quite a good business when you add up the numbers. It's hard to believe this car was once a basket case worth less than half the price of a new Fiesta. Now, everything down to the red leather seats seemed just as fresh as when it rolled out of the showroom 49 years ago. But it is a lovely car. The straight six two litre engine has only got just over 100 horsepower. So little in modern day terms. Disc brakes on the front servo to help them slow the car down, power steering, but still a lot of lock needed. It just reminds you how cars have changed over the last 50 years from taut, no roll, high revving sports cars to this elegant, roly poly style of the past. And I rather like it. You're probably thinking that this is James Bond's DB5 from Goldfinger and Skyfall. But I've got a little secret for you. Despite both films apparently using the same DB5, they were actually different cars. This one was used in Skyfall, but it was painstakingly restored here at Aston Martin to be an exact replica of the Goldfinger car. And I think you'll agree, the detail is mind-blowing. So not only am I driving it today, but you're letting me have it for the weekend, is that right? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> How can I get it for the weekend? Is it possible? No. That's not very James Bond, that, that key ring, though, is it? Do you reckon Daniel Craig's touched these keys, do you reckon? Odd job's had that one, hasn't he? You know, this is a, it's an emotive... Oh, it makes you feel amazing just driving this car, you know? You feel everybody coming the other way almost wants to stop and stare at it. And this is a very very big occasion for me, so let's get the basics out of the way before I get, well, a bit carried away. Stats-wise, it's a four-litre straight six, got 282 horsepower. It'll go on to an amazing 145 miles an hour. I feel mint, and I'm only cruising. And this is an old-school engine, you know, there's no direct fuel injection or electronic ignition. It's got three whacking great big carburettors. You can kind of hear them sucking and pouring petrol into the engine. As a cruiser, oh, it's lovely. It's, it's soft and compliant. You know, the seats really don't hold you in that much, but actually, I can't think of anything better. 
charged up and down the country roads of England, or even on the Riviera. Actually, stuff England. Let's find the Riviera. Now, in 1963, this was the absolute pinnacle of luxury. I mean, look at it. Look at these seats. They're amazing. The dashboard. Look at this. Electric windows in 63. Adjustable suspension. Five-speed gearbox. It doesn't get much better. This 1969 MGC was discovered at the Essen Motor Show in Germany. Brought back to Romania, given the full restoration. But, as you can see and hear, this restoration went a bit further, because this is Catalin's personal motorsport project. And he competes in the Romanian Hill Climb Championship. And instead of the usual 100 horsepower from the straight six feet from the front, He's got 150 horsepower, thanks partly to adding a third Weber carburetor. And it sounds lovely! There's quite a few more tricks besides. He's also got a straight cut gearbox, as you can hear. He's moved the seat back, got this long steering column, but unfortunately he's a bit shorter than me and it's too long. He's also gone to the effort back some 18 centimetres because this MGC was never announced as the best handling car. And every bit of extra weight you get over those rear wheels goes to try and help tame it. Although the MGC is definitely not for sale, it's now worth in the region of £40,000. It's a truly unique machine and illustrates another joy of restoring classic cars. Not only can you bring a vintage motor back to life, but you have the opportunity to tailor it to your own personal tastes. I just think that some of Catalin's tastes are a bit different to mine. This is one of the most successful sports cars ever made. Over half a million were built in a production period that spanned three decades. Everybody from Prince Charles to Sharon Stone has owned one. I'm talking about the quintessentially British MGB, which recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. 